after three years, the Sonic Frontier cycle is complete. From marketing to DLC, this game has changed and evolved so much. But now, it's time for the final send-off to Sonic Frontiers. The Sonic Frontiers Run Back. So like my first review, we're going to be looking at the controls of the game first. Because I live by one saying, if your controls are ass, then the game will be trash. And some of Sonic's more recent 3D outings haven't had the best controls. Well thankfully, that is not the case with this game. I believe that Sonic Frontiers has the best controlling Sonic since Adventure 1 and 2. It's not there yet, it's not there yet, but it is very close. He turns tight, he carries his momentum and jumps. My god, I didn't think I'd see the day that momentum is added back into a modern Sonic moveset. But it doesn't end there. For this game, Kishimoto decided to add in different settings that you can customize. You can customize Sonic's acceleration, his top speed, his bounce height. And when you adjust these settings the right way, it makes for some of the best controlling Sonic in a very long time. He can finally turn at 90 degrees at top speed. And don't get me started on the spin dash, bro. The spin dash in a 3D Sonic game? Are you kidding me? The last time we had a spin dash in a 3D Sonic game was lost, And then it was fucking useless. So I'm very glad it actually works kind of like a proper spin dash. My only actual problems with it is that you have to unlock it through completing all the action chain challenges, which we'll get to later. And you can only use it after you beat the, like, the game, basically. But if you did beat the game, you already probably have new game plus. And if you get new game plus, you can use the spin dash throughout the whole game. Also, it kind of uses like pseudo momentum instead of actual true momentum. So when you roll down hills, it works. But like really weirdly but regardless it's just so fun just using the spin dash to launch sonic so f just into the sky man you just go fucking flying and i miss overpowered spin dashes man but there is one part of the game where the controls just fucking tank dive now i'm gonna save it for later but when i get to that part trust me y'all are gonna know real pain <laughs> y'all gonna know real pain but overall the controls are really good, and I only wish for the next game is that they fully embrace, you know, true momentum and, you know, drop the boost for the open zone. I'm not completely sure how I feel about the cyberspace stages, but we'll see. But right now, I'm confident that they need to go full momentum for the open zone, and I'm pretty sure Kishimoto knows this too, because he stated multiple times already that they're running out of things to do with the boost. So this seems like a perfect time to transition into full momentum. Next up, let's touch on the open zone itself, the Starfall Islands. In Sonic Frontiers, you go to five, technically three, Starfall Islands. Kronos, Ares, Chaos, Rhea, and Oranos. Now, the art style and themes of these islands had some controversy. Some people really like the realistic vibe, saying it matches the unfamiliar and mysterious vibe of the game, while others don't like it and would much rather prefer a stylized art style, you know, akin to previous Sonic games. I'm kind of in the middle. Yeah, I low-key dig the realism and I get it, but I do wish the game did take a more creative approach with coming up with the art style, something more akin to Unleashed. Now let's talk about the islands themselves. Kronos, the starting island, and it's definitely a good first impression. It's a nice starting area that teaches you the ropes and stuff like that. It's not too big, but it's not too small either. Ares cranks up to 11. It's bigger and it's just cooler. It feels like the most developed and well thought out island. Chaos. Now, I really, really used to hate Chaos because the island level design wise just goes against Sonic. It's like it's fighting with you the entire fucking time. And it also doesn't help that there are big parts of the island that are just split apart from each other. But with the spin dash, it actually makes it really fun to go around. 
Now, Rhea is the most disappointing of the bunch. Not only is it just Kronos 2.0, but I feel like there's just so much missed potential on this island. Like, there's some really cool spots that just go completely unutilized. Now, Oranos is just Kronos 3.0, depending on what version of Oranos you play, which we'll get to later. But at least it actually has some level design. Speaking of, let's talk about that. So in the open world, level design mostly consists of floating metal platforms in the sky that feel really out of place. And the level design for them is very inconsistent. Some are really fun and with really well designed platforming challenges, like the Coco challenges and some of the platforming challenges in the Final Horizons DLC. While others are just really automated and you don't really have to do much, they're just there to look cool. But then there are these platforming levels that 1. actually match the theme of the zone and 2. are really fun. This. I want this for the open zone. If they just did this around the island and did it way more frequently, focused on this, the open zone would have felt way more organic to Sonic's world instead of just feeling like, you know, open space, like a generic open zone with all this random stuff. I feel like it would have felt so much more fun and organic to just mess around. Now, I could talk about this all day, but we still have to talk about what you actually do on the islands. So, let's start with the gameplay loop. So, basically how it goes is that you do the platforming, you find collectibles to upgrade Sonic and free your friends, you fight bosses to get portal gears, you use said portal gears to enter cyberspace, where once you beat cyberspace, you unlock the vault keys, and once you collect enough vault keys, you get a chaos emerald. And once you get all the chaos emeralds, you beat the boss of the island. Now, I think that this loop is actually really fun, especially with Sonic's moveset. You can find different ways to get medals and the collectibles, and just to move around the islands, you have a lot of freedom of the ways you can progress. The flow, oh, the flow, I feel like it's such an underrated part of the game, because it just feels really good. Most of the time, I wasn't really thinking, oh, I have to get this many more medals, because the flow was just so good, I was just playing the game for fun, and I would already get what I need. Also, Air Tricks Momentum, just the skips you can do with all that stuff, just made it way more fun just running around and collecting all the stuff. But I will say, on subsequent playthroughs, it can get really repetitive, especially if you play the game a bunch, but for the first two to three playthroughs, I think that it holds up really well. Now, besides that, you can also do challenges. Most of these are really simple, like a memory puzzle, hit the punching bag, quick step, but some of these are really fun, like a time attack, and my personal favorite, the action chain challenges that were added in update two, which is a time-based challenge where you basically have score points by doing basically anything on the island and you have to try your best to get an S rank. Sadly, it is the only replayable one. I would have loved to have the time attack replayable with a ranking system, kind of like the open zone speed levels, right? But overall, the challenges that actually use Sonic's moveset are the best ones, and the rest feel pretty basic. Also, I'm considering this a challenge because you kind of gotta have to go out of your way to do it. There are some music notes that you can find on the island that you get to unlock songs in the jukebox, which I love that they added this. This is such a fun feature because maybe you're getting tired of listening to you know, the same movement over and over. You get to listen to so songs from Sonic's past games. And the selection is no joke either. And if you use the birthday bash theme, you get an additional like fucking 20 or 30 more songs that are like really, some of them are really big, like deep cuts, man. Now, besides challenges, Sonic also has to face enemies that are being controlled by the end. And now, how is Sonic gonna deal with that? He's so gonna fucking throw hands, that's how he's gonna fucking deal with it. The combat in Sonic Frontiers can be summed up with style over substance. A lot of the moves are really cool and flashy, like the Key Blast, or the Phantom Rush. I didn't say Phantom, I didn't say Phantom, I said Phantom, I said Phantom! But they all kind of just do the same thing, deal damage. It doesn't help that the game is like, for 80% of it, really easy. Even if you use like, extreme mode, it's very hard to die unless you're like, 
bad at the game. But that also has to go for the boss fights. And honestly, I thought I really enjoyed most of the boss fights. But it had nothing to do with the combat. But more so just the gimmicks of the boss fights. Like, I really enjoyed Spider. But not because I was, you know, punching it. It was because I enjoyed their skydiving and doing all the hoops. I enjoyed the tank. But not because of, you know, punching it, it's because it was like this cool mini game. And let's say you're playing on the Final Horizon where all the enemies are just cranked up to a thousand, right? Even then, the enemies don't, like, get more advanced. They just become, you know, sponges and they just way too fast. And it adds no real skill or substance to the combat. And I think that they had an idea. And personally, I think it's way more entertaining and way more fun than the Werehog. Because it's one and done instead of the Werehog where you're just fucking slogging around, right? I want to have that feeling of, you know, I want to master it. And to this game's credit, there are some moves that, you know, do things besides damage. Like the Psy Loop that launches enemies into the air. I wish this game had some cool, you know, air combat. Kind of like DMC5. So for the next game, I really hope that they expand on this. And make it way more in-depth. We can see glimpses of this in the ninja fight. It actually blocks and dodges Sonic's attacks, so you just can't hit it. Take a crap ton of notes from DMC5, because I feel like that game does like super spammy and like combo moves really well. And air combat too, oh my god. Now once you beat some enemies and bosses and get the portal gears, you enter cyberspace. This is 100% where I have most of the issues of the game. So buckle up. So first off, the big thing that people take issue with, including me, is that not only does Cyberspace reuse assets from old games, but it reuses level layouts as well. W why? I, I get making original levels, you know, is hard, it's time consuming, it takes a budget, but most of the levels aren't even that long. Like, they're, most of them are like 30 to a minute long. Was the budget on this part of the game so low that this was like their last resort? And if you watched my past videos, you would know that was probably the case. And what really takes the fucking piss is that there were only four, count them, four level themes. Green Hill, Chemical Plant, Sky Sanctuary, and what I think is a new city theme. So if they were ripping assets from gens, why stop at three? At that point, bring back Crisis City. Bring back Seaside Hill. Bring back City Escape. Not only that, remember those controls that I was gushing about earlier? Well, yeah, they don't apply here. Instead, we're back to tanky, stiff controls akin to Sonic Forces. But at least the spin dash and momentum s settings carry over, so it's not super terrible. But, like, you had a good system, so why did you decide to change it? But despite all of those problems, I genuinely still have a lot of fun playing cyberspace i think it's the speed running man it has to be even sonic team knows it man the homing launch that was a glitch they kept it in the game and they made it like a little feature they had like these marks to show what you did and if you did a homing dash you know it would mark it so yeah they acknowledge it and they're like okay it's a glitch but you know it helps speed running so we'll add it and kudos to sonic team for doing that a lot of like games if they see a glitch and people are enjoying it they'll probably remove it anyways so, you know, kudos to Sonic Cube for that. There are 39 levels in the game if you want to include the B-side levels or the Final Horizon levels, which are by far the best cyberspace levels in the game because they actually experiment with a bit more open level design and using momentum in levels, which if they expand on this and actually make it really good instead of just fucking platforms all over the place, oh, we can have some really good levels in future Sonic games. I don't know, man. Cyberspace is like the part of the game where I can just pick it up and play it and stay on for like a few hours. Obviously for the next game, I am not taking anything less but original stages anymore. And I'm pretty sure Kishimoto and Izuka knows this, man. Like I said before, let's go full momentum based gameplay and bring back adventure level design, man. Or advent akin to adventure level design. And make the speedruns a bit tougher for the S rank. Now while playing Cyberspace, you have to complete these challenges like beat the level in a certain time, get all the red rings. And when you do those challenges, you get keys. And when you get enough keys, you get a Chaos Emerald. And when you get all of the Chaos Emeralds, you get to what is hands down 
the best part of the game. Now, if you are not a fan of the words Peak Fiction, GOAT, RAW, FIRE, click off the video because you're about to hear that shit 50 times. And yeah, I'm reusing the same bit from my original Frontiers review. Super Sonic is fucking peak, man. Okay. I don't know what crack they were smoking or what type of drug they were taking, but they were cooking some of the most immaculate, uh, the most fire, the most raw Sonic boss fights for this game. Each boss fight at the end of each island could be a final boss fight in any other Sonic game, man. They got Kellen Quinn from Sleeping With Sirens to sing the Titan boss fight themes. And oh my god, we got we got fucking heavy metal in the Sonic series. Oh my, I'm a sucker for metal, okay? I lost my fucking mind when I heard this shit, man. And do I have to talk about the set pieces, bro? Sonic fucking throws Wyvern into the fucking mountain, bro. What more do I have to say, bro? Oh my god! <laughs> that I'm talking about these boss fights in the way that I am is just a, a testament to how good they are and you can say oh they're just glorified cutscenes or this and that I do not care I cannot physically bring myself to hate these these are just so good I don't even know how they're gonna top these for the next game but I cannot wait to see how they do You did well, said. It's time to head home. Oh, I like the sound of that, Father. Now let's talk about the music. So Sonic Frontiers has to be one of the most diverse games when it comes to his music right next to Sonic Unleashed. There are so many genres that it's hard not to find something you'll like. First, the open zone music. It goes for a more serene and calming feeling, making you feel lost in the world. And my all-time favorite track has to be Second Wind from the Final Horizons Orano section. When it hits you with those pianos, it's raps bro. Shit had me levitating like I was the fucking hover wisp bro. Then we move over to cyberspace, and we talked about this before, but Otani finally started to cook and got some really good EDM cyberspace tracks. He tried mixing EDM and rock in forces, that didn't really sound that good, but in Frontiers, he decided to stick with EDM, and I think that perfectly fits the, cy the cyberspace vibe. And because of that, we got some bangers, like 2-6, Transparent Highway. I don't know. Something about this just hits me, man. I think it's the build-up to the lead synths, and then how it just fucking, like, goes into the chorus. Um... Then, of course, we have the goaded titan themes now this shit is what i live for otani cooked up raw 
heavy metal tracks. And they were able to get the lead vocalist from Sleeping With Sirens, Kellen Quinn, to add these fucking demonic screeches, man. These songs have to be some of the rawest pieces of sonic music ever produced. And if I were to pick one, now it's tough for me because I'm constantly flip-flopping between what my favorite one is. But right now, as of this moment, it is Find Your Flame. Just for the solo and outro, man. This soundtrack is absolutely beautiful. It is definitely in my top five, and for good reason. There's so many different sound, like different styles, and they're all just like, they just all hit, man. People who are saying this soundtrack is bad have no fucking clue what they're talking about. Now we're on to the story. Now, real quick, I just wanna give a quick synopsis of the plot, because it really isn't much. Eggman discovers the Starfall Islands, that is home to the agents, and it's tech and he tries to con take control of the tech but instead he unleashes the end and it turns against him at the same time sonic tails and amy and knuckles in the prologue all end up on the starfall islands sonic's friends get trapped in cyberspace but sonic's able to escape now with this mysterious voice guiding him sonic must beat all the titans save his friends and save the world now the game's plot is really basic where this game shines it's its character writing and interactions because now we have ian flynn writing the characters instead of fucking pontaf who didn't even know what the sonic adventure games were. now what makes sonic frontier story so different from the other games is that it's a very character driven story if you're subscribed to my channel which you should totally do i'll love you forever you know that i'm doing a series on all of the characters in sonic frontiers and for most of the characters, it's really a story of restoring their characters to their former self. And well, yeah, it's really good to see these characters finally acting like themselves after years of them feeling like caricatures of who they used to be. It kind of sucks that we need a whole game to really bring them back to where they were before. But we don't just get to see old characters. We get to see a brand new character, Sage, and she is an instant, oh my, an instant fan favorite with me and with a bunch of other Sonic fans. Man, yo, Sonic Team has been on a roll recently, like with like creating new characters, like with Sage, Trip, and Superstars. It looks like they finally got their mojo back with actually creating really cool and interesting characters. But with Sage, again, I talked about this in my last, uh, in my video about her is some moments um, and some character changes about her just don't feel earned because the, the way that the story is told feels like stuff has been left out or just not put in the right place so when she has that whole you know nah, 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 it's, it just comes out of nowhere right and you know it's infamous for being fucking goofy instead of you know being sad and it's the same with Eggman because we got a f oh, okay S since we're talking about Eggman let's talk about the war of the game there is so much cool lore that's just not just from the game, but from the Sonic series in general, right? And we get them through the Eggman logs. We get to know that Chaos is a descendant of the Ancients. We hear about Maria. We hear about where the Ancients come from. We get a bunch of info on the Chaos Emeralds as well and their origins and the origins of the Master Emeralds, kind of, not completely. The lore is really interesting. Especially for someone who's been with the series forever. But again, going back to those Eggman logs, a lot of Eggman and Sage's, you know, relationship is stuck in the Eggman logs, which should have been, you know, in cutscenes. Because if you think about it, there could be people who don't even bother to do the fishing and getting the Eggman logs. So a lot of people are missing out on that lore. That's why if that scene feels so out of place, if they put that stuff into actual gameplay and stuff, you know, relegating it to the logs it would have made a bit more sense so in the next game i really want the story to be a bit more similar to sonic adventure 2 i don't want the focus to be on the characters i want them to act how they are we got okay with this game we have them back to where they are now now have them act how they usually are but don't focus on them i want the story 
to focus on what's actually going on with the plot and don't make it super serious i want like again with sonic adventure 2 it's serious when it needs to be but it also has those lighthearted moments that would be perfect now finally we have to talk about the final horizons now i decided to do a whole section on it because it's basically its own game like fucking jesus hell it's fucking two times longer than forces so might as well right now i already did a full depth review on my channel so if you want a better look at it you can go watch it so in this part i'm gonna give like a bit of a watered down version but we're gonna cover all the big parts so let's just get right into it right so the big thing that the final horizons tries to accomplish is add new characters with knuckles amy and tails improve the final island improve the final boss and ending in general and the difficulty let's start with that first one amy is by far the best out of all three of them right she has the best movement out of the three if i were to compare her to anyone i'd say she's best basically like a floatier and easier to control sonic like the, she even has like moves that you know use real momentum like her bike thing and her hover card thing that uses actual momentum not pseudo momentum and also really cool detail i mentioned this in my review but if you use her cart you can one you can drift with it and two if you like do a hard stop she does the akira drift which is really cool tails is my personal favorite just because of the tornado man his flying also just feels really satisfying i i know a lot of people complain about your know, knuckles and amy's and like all the animation startups but something about tails just feels really like it flows really well because you don't just stop dead in your tracks you're still moving but you have like that that point where it's just like you're just there and then you get launched up really high i feel like it's like good flow and also when you you know let go and you want to fly again it doesn't do that whole animation again it just you go like bah, 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 bah. it like you can spam it and it, it's really easy to control knuckles man knuckles man they did my boy dirty they fucked up his gliding they made it super stiff it's not as tight as previous games they added that stupid startup lag for some reason his wall climbing is a bit jank Oh, it's truly tragic. But overall, besides Knuckles, I really enjoyed the new characters. Now, the changes to Oranos itself. Right off the bat, the level design is just much better than the base game. But some of it still doesn't match that same quality as the Coco challenges. Because, you know, there's way more on this island. They have to make it for each character. And, you know, they don't have time to really, like, focus and detail all of them like the coco challenges and i also the way that this dlc was made it was probably made in between updates so they're like they were probably like getting skills as they were making this that's why i feel like some of the platforming is much better than the other ones but most of them i had a lot of fun with especially the towers oh my god these towers get so much hate except for the first one like i said before fucking robox obby bullshit they were so fun especially on replays oh my god bro it's so fun to just speed run them sometimes i just like to go back and play them for fun especially that last tower it just feels like the, it just feels the flow is amazing since we're on that topic the difficulty holy shit the difficulty the enemies are harder the platforming is tougher the master coco the aforementioned towers kishimoto was on some demon timing or something man Cause he told y'all to peak game and lock in. He did not hold back with this difficulty, man. And I love that shit. I'm a fucking demon when it comes to that shit. Give me a hard game, I'll fucking play it. But I can see how it's kind of a detriment though. Because it will definitely drive away casuals who don't want to deal with that insane difficulty spike. But for someone who loves it, hell yeah, I'm all for it. I'm obsessed with it, some might say. But... It was definitely all worth it because we got some really good story to boot. I really enjoyed the character writing and all the hidden lore that was added to the update. And I want to mention this specifically. Y'all were fucking screaming at me, bro. Y'all were yelling and screaming about the way I was talking about Tails. So I looked back and I thought about it again. And I would like to say, I am sorry. I understand why he probably acted that way. But then, after all of the story, we get to the greatest final fight I have ever experienced in Sonic history. And again, this part is completely unscripted because I can't put into words how much I enjoy this. So let me just fucking yap for a while. 
okay? Holy fucking shit. First off, it fakes you out with regular Supreme, right? Nothing, literally, they didn't change anything about the, the first fight. It's just Supreme. But then, the fucking end comes out of nowhere. It's fucking massive. You really feel the scale of it. It, it, it launches down this fucking connection cord, right? It takes control of Supreme, and it inhabits Supreme itself. And now you're fighting the end within Supreme, which I feel like is a good way to make that boss fight. And it gets all feral and shit. It's like this fucking deranged animal. And when you fight it at first, you're like, oh, 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 you can't hit it, right? But remember, if you're playing the update, you're doing everything you're doing is adding up to getting that new form that Sonic gets. And when you're fighting it, you get Super Sonic 2. And oh my fucking god, it is the rawest shit. It's more raw than the base Titan fights. Because Sonic is just so fucking... It's like, the best way I could describe it is Ultra Instinct. He is so calm. He bitch slaps the fucking energy balls. When he loops, his special thing is that he fucking snaps his fingers. And he fucking... It's, it snaps Supreme's neck. It's, it has that fucking sound effect too. With the blood gushing. It's so fucking visceral, man. It's so gruesome too. It, oh my fucking... God, bro. Oh my god. And do I have to talk about the fucking QTEs? Sonic is just fuck. Look at this. He's him, bro. He's him. Look at him. He goes up to Supreme. Fucking folds his arms. Fucking boom, 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 IDW reference. Fuck. Bro, he's so fast that you don't even. He's so fast that he doesn't even have to touch the fucking enemy. And then, and then, we get to the end of the fight. Sonic fucking kicks him into the air. Does the most Dragon Ball shit I've ever fucking seen in my life, bro. And then. He goes into the cannon that he took from Supreme, and he turns into Cyber Sonic. He gets shot out by Eggman, and fucking, not only does he go through Supreme, but he fucking impales the end, completely destroying it. He doesn't even need Sage. Sage lives, by the way. That's how fucking powerful he was. And the final, oh my, the final shot. Nearing the end of Adventure 2, Sonic just fucking dead in space. Similar to how Shadow was, falls back down to the ground, and he is with his friends. Sage is alive, Eggman's not depressed. This ending is, for me, is on par with Sonic Adventure 2. That's my favorite ending to any Sonic game ever. Nothing fucking topped that ending. This game is tied with it. After playing it again, it's tied with it. I really enjoyed this update. And I feel like it just made the game fucking 10 times better. I know it was very controversial when it came out. But every time I go back and play it, I just find more reasons why I love it. I get there's issues with it. But I just, I just keep, I don't, I don't know, man. I just, I love it. Now we have made it to the end. Nearly one year of this game, man. I created this channel literally four days before this game came out. What are my final thoughts on it? I love this game, man. I, I think I love it even more now. Despite all... Of, I think this is the takeaway from this game. Despite all of the issues it has, and there's a lot of them. I just... I, I fucking adore this game, man. There's so many points in this game where I just see the passion, I see the creativity. I'm having so much fun with the game and I'm just falling in love with it, man. This game is the reason why I even made a YouTube channel, is the reason why I'm even part of the, the franchise again because I left after Forces and this game was basically my last hope. Without this game, I would, wouldn't even be here talking to you guys. So this game is very important to me. And you know, obviously, like I said before, I wouldn't be here talking to you guys. And you... <coughs> Never in my life that I think I'd be, you know, talking about this fucking silly blue rat to, you know, this many people. And, of course, I know this game has issues. And, of course, I'm not going to be blind to them. But I just can't help but love this game, man. This game is kind of something I've been wishing for forever. I think everybody always wanted an open world Sonic game. And now we have it officially. And for a first attempt, they did a pretty damn good job. 
So of course they need to fix some stuff for the future game. But I just want to say before I hop off, thank you Sonic Team, thank you Kishimoto, thank you Izuka, thank you for making this game. Thank you to Kishimoto especially because he's been on Twitter, he's been looking at all of our feedback and talking to us. And I don't think we would have the game that we have if it wasn't for him. We wouldn't have the spin dash, we wouldn't have any of the quality of life changes from update 3, anything. And I just want to say thank you guys. Thank you to everybody who has been there since the beginning. From the very first video, even if you joined maybe from one of my music videos, if you've joined from one of my, you know, uh, beta videos, if you've joined from any of all my other videos, thank you. Because all of you are so important to me. And to be truth, to, like, I wouldn't be here without this game. If I never made that first video, I wouldn't be here talking to you guys. So, before I hop off, I just want to say thank you guys. Thank you, Sonic Team. Thank you, Sonic Frontiers. And thank you, guys. But that's all i got to say for today. I'll see y'all in the next one.